Suzanne, I was thinking back to the fact that the very first time you and I started talking about teaching a workshop together was almost a year ago when we had dinner together in New York mm -hmm. City. And, and that was actually the first time for us to meet face to face. Mm -hmm. We'd known each other and done lots of interviews and mm -hmm. webinars and things together, but we, we met face to face, we had dinner and it's as if we just knew that we were destined to do some teaching together but it was a completely different world then. It sure was. And to think about it being a year ago, it just seems kind of like yesterday that, that we had that dinner and that meeting. And then you're right, when you think about the state of the world back then, and literally, you know, New York City is just an incredible, beautiful place. And then we had this beautiful gift of going to not only your great workshop, but then going to a restaurant that had the view of the whole city. And now we're in a very, very different place in such a short amount of time, which is incredible. But yes, it was, it was like organic that when we met and we were so aligned with our thinking and our kind of our journeys that we were like, we want to do something together. And that's when it started that idea. And here we are. Yeah. And it's so interesting that both of us had this insight that while like we learned so much from working with dying patients and on the one hand we learned about death and dying and the importance of preparing for that but both mm -hmm. of us were so excited about the fact that we learned how to live our lives better we mm -hmm. learned lessons mm -hmm. that help us enjoy life and fully participate in life and that that's really the message that we want to share with people Yes. And it's so important because right now, obviously, and before even the pandemic, you know, death is so fear. And, you know, we've just gotten to this place that it is so unfortunately removed from our natural awareness and realities for multiple reasons um, that having an inside look into it and knowing what it really looks like and knowing the beautiful, sacred way that end of life is and also but incredible wisdom from those at the end of life that share with us um, that I really feel it's our responsibility to be able to share that with whoever would like to hear that because it does help to uncover this illusion of what would that be like and how fearful it's built up around it that doesn't need to be but I've never felt more alive and I tell people this that I've never felt more alive than when I started working for hospice because it kicked me into a whole different perspective on so many levels and it enriched my life on a day-to-day -day basis that couldn't be attained any other way so yeah we both agree on that and said we need to tell people and share this yeah, and little did we know when we were first conceiving of this idea <laughs> so many months ago that we would land with these yeah. thoughts and these ideas for this workshop. And it's the, it's the same workshop we had planned all that time ago. Little did we know how perfect it would be for this moment when so many people yes. are being, who probably have never really thought about death or dying before are being confronted with it in their mm -hmm. everyday lives. And so many people, as you mentioned, are experiencing fear right now. Mm -hmm. And it's so important to address that. I think what you said is so, so important because we have, again, a different, we're privileged to have a different look and awareness because of the gift of working with people at the end of life about how to live, about the real purpose of life and the wisdom and the tools that can help us reach our path of alignment of that higher place of that purpose. And we, we, when we got together a year ago, we said, oh my gosh, this is so important to share with people because people are, are suffering and they're struggling, not just the fear of death, but really struggling in life. You know, life is really tough. And now we're at a completely next level of intensity of levels of grief of all kinds, levels of fear of all kinds, and deaths of all kinds, not just of physical people, but deaths of your old way of life, death of occupation, death of just on so many levels that these tools can be used in any setting within that. So today more than ever, this, this course I'm so excited to be able to share with people to help them navigate, not only navigate through this, but to thrive through this time period. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's so beautiful. I was thinking today about you know that old saying, the darkest hour uh, mm -hmm. comes just before dawn. And mm -hmm. I know it sounds kind of trite, like it, it, you know, because it's been used a lot in the past. But I think it's so true right now. I think mm -hmm. people are feeling really desperate, 
and wondering what's going to happen next. But mm -hmm. I take so much comfort in that idea because that, that's something I saw with my hospice patients. Does that ring true for you too? Yeah, so one of the things that I'll share with groups is the actual words from my patients that not all of them said this, but many would say that cancer was the best thing that ever happened to me. And we're talking about people that have an end of life diagnosis. Getting sick was the best thing that happened to me. And I would say, please expand on that. Please share. And what they'd share is that for the first time in their lives, they stopped and they really got present. And what's more important too, is that the things that they thought defined them, that they were going through life with their job titles and the way that they looked and maybe you know the work, again, powerful or degrees and things that they felt gave them value in who they were and defined them were stripped away. So their looks were stripped away, their health was stripped away. They, you know, not working anymore, many, a lot of things. And they, they actually found themselves, the authentic self for the first time, maybe ever, and how beautiful that was and how loving that was and how, again, you know, not ego, not fear-based, but just real and authentic. And they got present in the moment and were able to be with loved ones in that space and felt better and loved and happier than they ever had. So I'm thinking, gosh, we need to take this information, share it with everyone so we don't wait till that time period. We want to capitalize on it now. So that, so I know that our training has like those pearls that they've shared with us throughout it so that we can do exercises and get to that place today, today. Yeah. Yeah. And it's almost, I mean, it sounds like a paradox that our patients are telling mm -hmm. us this event of such of great mm -hmm. loss and great suffering and great, great change is the best thing that happened to me. Mm -hmm. But it's as if these painful experiences assist us and actually accelerate our path of spiritual growth. And that's what seems to me is happening for our whole society right now. We're going through a global pandemic together mm -hmm. and we're mm -hmm. all receiving this assistance to accelerate mm -hmm. our spiritual mm -hmm. development and growth. This is so true. And I think again, we're gonna share multiple stories, but something that is so important that the universe always has your back and always is working on your behalf. So life doesn't happen to you, it happens for you. And the biggest lessons, again, from the wisdom of patience were the gifts that, were, that came in packages that don't look like gifts, the gifts that don't have a um, pathway that you can see clearly, okay, this is happening, but I know that it's gonna get here. It's not necessarily visual, it has to be, something that you trust and that you know, and those are the greatest ones. So you're being broken open and being given that gift to accelerate in something that again, is coming in a very difficult package at the moment, but those are the exact, I feel like the exact way of growth that you're going to attain. So the more difficult the challenge or the feeling right now is on the other side of it, once you can get right on the other side of it, which you will, is going to be that much more, again, beautiful and of a different level. And if you can just hold on to that truth and that kind of awareness, and we're gonna show you many examples of that, then when something comes that you don't make sense out of and that's very painful, hold on to get your grounding, use your tools of how you're, you know, go into your spirit, go into your soul, get your tools and have faith because it's, it's here to help you to break open to a much higher way of living and consciousness. Mm. I love that image of a mm. gift coming in a package that doesn't look like a gift. And what we're really being asked to overcome mm -hmm. some of our social conditioning that tells us this mm -hmm. is what a gift looks like. It's silver mm -hmm. and shiny and wrapped yep. up in a bow. And yep. we're really asked to leave all that aside. That's not the truth. That's not how it really is. And so yeah. I, that image that that really rings true for me, you're getting a gift. It just doesn't look like what you thought a gift would look like. Yeah. And I think sometimes with people too, when you share that the depth of the pain of and the grief of that gift period is directly going to correlate with the beauty on the other side, sometimes again helps to say, okay, this is really super tough. And I think we're all feeling that right now, you know, on a day-to-day -day basis, we have to dig really deep sometimes and, 
it's really challenging to know that we're all being given this gift and it's quite beautiful that we're all being given it at the same time to know how similar connected not alone we are um, that when we come out on the other side i mean there's something really incredibly powerful and beautiful waiting for us yeah oh so true and mm -hmm. i think we intentionally chose this as the starting place for our our workshop too starting mm -hmm. with the painful mm -hmm. experiences mm -hmm. of life because that's what that's where everyone is right now that's what everyone's yeah. dealing with right now and it makes the most sense that this is like the fertile ground where yeah. new growth can occur so we're beginning with beginning with the the dirt the hard things the painful things yeah, but I think also, Karen, because you and I have been, again, been so privileged to be in this space working with people at the end of life and listening to their wisdom, and I know that we've had our own talks about our lives, is that figuring out what life is about, right? So trying to figure it out, and you know that our lovely patients do a life review and they do that reflection, and hearing the same things over and over about life was a journey about learning to, again, um, know that we're one, learn to love unconditionally. But we have a personal journey that we each one of us goes through that always has painful experiences and trauma. So I don't want people to think that anyone doesn't have that. It might look like some people have a perfect life and that's really, you know, not, not true because everyone has it, but everyone goes through periods. And so what is, what is that supposed to teach us on that personal journey? and then collectively look what we're going through. So we have two different things and we can apply the tools to each one of those paths. Mm. Yes, exactly. And that's, I think that's what you and I have spent a lot of years of our own lives gathering mm. our own personal tools that have helped yes. us. Yeah. And uh, that's part of what we really are excited to share with other people. We, tools we learn from our patients and tools we may have picked up in other areas of life. Yeah, because, and, and again, I want people to know that we all have that. So it's not, a, it's, it's just that when you have it, what, again, what inside tools do you have to get through it? Again, to think this gift is not coming in a pretty package, but there's something beautiful and opportunity here for my growth on the other side of it. But it's very important to know and have tools to get through these hard times. So again, that's really our platform now is wanting to share this with as many people on the biggest platform globally because we're all suffering right now and going through it. And these can really help. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So in our very first module, we're, we're going to talk all about these painful experiences and tell stories and mm -hmm. talk about the gift and why we shouldn't send the gift back. We need to, keep, we need to mm -hmm. open this gift, even though it's a, a challenging and difficult gift mm -hmm. and, um, and learn how to navigate it. And so I won't give away everything we're gonna teach there, but, uh, but I think that's a, a really rich place to start because we have mm -hmm. to start where our deepest pain is and, yeah. uh, and we can move on from there. Yeah, and, and I think, again, certain things just really change the perception for me that meaning that, you know, um, these, these painful experiences are given to you as one of the greatest opportunities for your spiritual growth, which is really the big goal here of us evolving as our beings, right, and finding our purpose and our truth. So these come in those packages and they don't disappear. So you can push them away. You can run try and run from them you can you know do things and I, there's no ever no judgment in what we say but we know people maybe self-medicate or do th different things to not because oh i don't want to that's uncomfortable i don't want to go there and we totally understand that however that's where the beauty is and it's the whatever you resist persists so it's always going to be you know gnawing on you and coming up and once you have the safety and the tools to know how to open that gift and what to actually learn from it. Not to say, get rid of it, I don't wanna see it. When you, it's not as hard as sometimes we think. And yes, it's uncomfortable, but when you have a support system and you have a community and you know that everyone in the world has their challenges that they go through, that we're in this together, um, it can make, again, approaching that so much easier or feel more, again, comfortable and, and sacred. But what's on the other side of that gift frees you to absolutely create a life that you couldn't even conceive before that. 
you have to be able to move through those lessons to open up to that brightness on the other side. And yeah, and we're going to share again, personal stories and then stories from our patients. And I think giving the tools and the exercises to actually do that, shift that energy, change it, um, is going to change lives for people. And, and Suzanne, one thing I just saw today that you posted on uh, Facebook and Instagram, um, let's see, whatever the question is, love is the answer. And that really, that sums up the heart of, of our second module, I think, is this idea of emphasizing love. Yeah, there's so much going on today. And I understand that everything, and, and that's a good thing. And I just, again, let's look at the package. Let's look at the gift. There's so much pain that's come to the surface and awareness in injustices, and that's so important. But there's also a place where we have to understand where we can make that shift. Where, where are the tools? What is the truth? And, and literally, you know, when I thought about that, and this, this is happening in this section, this is happening. And I said, whatever the problem is, whatever the, the question is, love is the answer. And you can dig deep and it can look differently as far as how it manifests, but love is the answer to all of it. Um, even again, people who need a lot of love. Um, and send them love. Don't send them anger. Send them love. What if we shifted? At, what if we just did an experiment for everyone that we're really angry at, for who's not doing the right thing, living unconsciously, causing pain for others, and instead of getting angry and sending that frustration and anger, what if we sent them love? Mm -hmm. I just wonder what would, what would, and I know what would happen because we live in this, but easier said than done, but we can get there, but it's a difference in perspective for us too, because the, the frustration of seeing things that we know don't make any sense, right. That are, that are being done. And you could just, you know, you could just be like, what is going, why? I mean, it's inflammation in our bodies, it's anger, and it's not constructive. It's not going to allow me to create a space for constructive, beautiful flow of how we want to create this new world for one another. If I'm blocked with that other energy, I can allow the space in to come up with great solutions, hopefully, and create community and bring us together because I'm in, I'm in the, what I call is like um, the, the toe of the undercurrent of like the, the, the chaos, which is so easy to be in. We have, to, we have to make a choice to step out of that and to exercise a different energetic muscle, to heal, to be able to help us create, again, this new energetic, beautiful place that we all want to get to. Yeah. And, and one of the, uh, one central focus of the second module of our workshop is forgiveness, which is really the greatest act of love, I think, that we can perform. And yet it's really under taught, I think, and under discussed in our society, really the importance of forgiveness. Yeah. And there's so many misconceptions about forgiveness. And again, people that don't understand it, it's not just a word, it's, there's techniques, it's a process. Um, but it is the single most transformative thing that I've ever seen with my patients at end of life and for life, because now we teach all the doulas about this within the course and they're all applying it to their life. And they're saying, oh my gosh, I took a course to help learn how to care for other people. And this changed my life because I implemented some of the tools and it's, it's so powerful and it's the single most thing. So one of the things that I just want to highlight, I feel is one of the biggest misconceptions is that forgiveness is not for the other person. It's for you. It's for you. And that we all have forgiveness to give and forgiveness to receive. And there's no judgment here. So allowing you to bring that into your life again can clean your slate and all these past, what you felt maybe your situation or your past experiences defined who you are and that how you could move forward or not move forward. Many people don't move forward because they're like, well, I can't because all this stuff happened to me and I'm a victim and, and I get that, but you can free yourself of it. And what if we go back and refocus 
the experiences that we've had now with our new knowledge of turning them into gifts, okay? They didn't get, they're not wrapped in those, but now we're gonna wrap them in that and say, oh, wait a minute, maybe that anger that I've been holding on for the last 15 years, that experience was really one of my greatest teachers and you can still you can still now benefit from it if you shift your perspective on it and you can move forward in in a world that you can create whatever you want from yeah and i love i always think of i'm not sure if this was something the buddha said i i should look it up so i know for sure but that holding on to hatred or unforgiveness is like drinking poison and thinking that it will hurt the other person and it only yep. hurts you. And when yeah. I think of that, it, it makes it so obvious. Mm -hmm. Well, of course, I want to get rid of the poison in my life. Yeah. It's not hurting them. It's not doing what my ego wishes it would, causing the other person pain. It's only hurting me. What was so ironic is that so many people, and again, we've worked a lot with forgiveness, that the other person involved in the scenario or whatever it might have been, many times doesn't even remember any of this. So you're sitting here every day angry at that person and it's doing nothing but hurting you. And then there's examples of where I've taken, again, people who have had some really, I mean, just unimaginable experiences happened and they forgave and they say they forgave because they had to, that was the only way that they could survive is by letting it go. But it's so beautiful and it's so courageous and it changes people's lives. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Having seen my patients dealing mm -hmm. with the need to forgive because they wanted mm -hmm. to be at peace. They just did not want to carry this burden anymore. It mm -hmm. made me instantly look at myself and think, mm -hmm. wow, I'm carrying, I'm carrying a yeah. lot here. I'm carrying yeah. a, a lot of heavy baggage from the past that I keep maintaining. And I don't, I don't want to do that. And I want to work on it now, not wait until I'm on my deathbed someday. Absolutely, because my patients who I saw for, forgive, and it's, a, it's again a beautiful organic thing that I believe happens with some of the safety energy towards the end of life or the awarenesses that come up, but the transformation that that made for them energetically and just their heart bursting open, I was like, oh my gosh, we need to do this now so that we can live the rest of our lives like that. And so from a non-judgmental place, if there's never any judgment, of course, we're all accountable for our actions, but that we know that forgiveness can be given to us, that we can forgive people at any time. It's a choice. It's a choice and that we want to do the work to do that. Um, and it will change everything moving forward. I think forgiveness should be taught in every class and every grade of school everywhere. So true. And, mm -hmm. and I remember wondering, like, is it possible to forgive before you get on your deathbed? That I remember that occurred to me mm -hmm. in hospice, like, maybe you can't, maybe something special happens at the end of life and you can't do it earlier in life, but I decided I'm going you know, to try and work on it. And I think you and I both having learned that, yes, it's possible and it changes everything in your life. That's one thing that we're really eager to teach about. Yes, because we want, again, we want to help people to live their highest, most beautiful purposeful life right now, which is again, what we've all, I've always been trying to study what life's about learning from my patients. Um, but it's very interesting you say that because I think again, there's something organic at end of life that's like our last opportunity. And I think as the spiritual body becomes more pronounced and the physical body's going down, I feel like there is a safety or I call it like spiritual wisdom that comes that helps people bring all their stuff up without the constraints of maybe guilt, shame, and anger and pushing it away. There's more of a softness and we see that happen and it transforms everything, but we can do that now with this information and it can change the next 30, 40, 50 years. And yes, I'm all about that. Yeah. And one other thing that just occurred to me is that for some of us, the only place we've really heard about forgiveness may have been uh, in a religious or faith-based context. And so those of us who've left behind religion or not mm -hmm. part of a faith may feel like that's not something that applies to us because it was attached to some other belief system, but that's not true at all either. It's That's something. a really good, yeah, that's a very good point. Um, and so absolutely, no, this is universal. And also I think that people have to understand that forgiveness, it's not just a word. It's not saying, okay, I forgive you and we're done. It really is a process. And it really, there are techniques that we're going to share in the training. Um, it's shifting energy. 
you know, it's taking something that was locked inside, maybe anger or, or whatever that experience is it, and softening it, opening it up, looking at it from a different perspective, sending it love or however, and healing how we're going to do it and releasing it. So there's a process to that. And there's techniques that actually shift that energy that we're going to share with everybody. Yeah. 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 I'm really excited to do that because as I said, I think that we're, we're undereducated and underinformed about mm -hmm. forgiveness and the power of forgiveness, especially in this way that we're talking about it here, you know, in a, yeah. as a, an act of love for yourself, for yeah. other people, for the planet. And if there's one thing that you could ask me that if I gave you one thing that was like the golden key or the tool that I've learned from everything about life and how to make it the best, it's forgiveness. It's, it's the tool of forgiveness because we know that we all have these experiences that we're going through and we can again change our energetic expression, heart, everything. So it goes with love, but forgiveness is the tool to get to that unconditional loving energetic place. Yeah. And as you said earlier, forgiveness is the key for recognizing those, those gifts that don't look like gifts for, for mm -hmm. being able to recognize that they actually are gifts and for rewrapping them, as you said, and turning yeah. them into gifts by just forgiving life, forgiving God, forgiving yourself, forgiving things that have happened, that have taken place and, and yeah. setting aside the anger and disappointment and uh, despair that we've felt about what has happened. Yeah. And not feeling that your past experiences are your circumstances and define you because I think that again with this is a whole learning purpose and what if the people that have heard us along the journey were our greatest teachers you know just that shift in perspective of you know maybe you had a marriage that didn't work or whatever I mean we all have multiple and you you're really like oh that person really just caused me so much pain I wish I never met them what if when we looked back at the gifts right and we can kind of, again unwrap them for what they are what were they meaning to from a different way now um, being a little bit more removed. And then that person that was in that position, instead of, you know, not like not can't stand their face or their look, looked at them like, wow, they were one of my greatest teachers. Thank you. Not that I want to necessarily see you or be friends with you, which you don't have to. And that's another thing that we teach you about forgiveness. It, you can give forgiveness. You don't have to see the person. The person doesn't even need to be alive. These are really important things. Um, but again, changing your perception and your energetic, I believe we have almost like energetic umbilical cords to things. And so, it, and they can drain us. Those things that are holding us in the past are constantly on a low level draining our energy. And you're going to literally cut the cord to that to own all of your energy when you forgive and release that. So, so powerful beyond anything that I could ever share with anyone about a single thing that will change your life is forgiveness. Yeah. And how powerful is that as a tool right now, as we're going through mm -hmm. this pandemic together and there's been a lot of pain, a lot of suffering, a lot of confusion yeah. and fear. Yeah. And yeah. this is a time when we need to be able to reframe this experience we're going through together as mm -hmm. a gift, not a gift mm -hmm. we asked for or wanted, mm -hmm. but it's, it is a gift. We may not see it that way yet, but right going to prove itself to be a gift. Don't it will. You know, and it's so great that you say that because everything always is working on our behalf. And I know it doesn't always seem that way. And it, and I'm not diminishing the suffering that we go through. Absolutely not. But it's always on the other side. And sometimes it's, you can understand it sooner. Sometimes it takes a very long time, but always there is that beautiful on the other side. So when you can hold into your heart that the universe loves you unconditionally and always wants the best for you and is always giving you opportunities, presenting you with opportunities on your personal path and on our collective path for that advancement, for that opportunity for growth. It's up to us if we take advantage of that and can see it. Um, but knowing that everything is always working for us really gives me a sense of peace on a very deep level that when, when everything is swirling and chaotic, and I know that a hundred thousand million percent that this is for the benefit on some level that good can come with it. Um, it, it again brings me a sense of calm, um, not saying that we don't have to actively play a role in it because we do. And we also have to use our own personal tools with how do we 
care for ourselves during this crisis period, mentally, physically, emotionally, all of it, because it's intense. Yeah, and it's a day-to-day -day process. It isn't yeah. just that, well, I'm going to shift my perspective on it and everything will be fine. No, every single day you have to wake up and you look at what's yeah. happening and shift your perspective every day. But that's where the tools come in really. Yes. yes, so tools and community. And I think that, again, when uh, we talk about this, I think that one of the things that gets us to a, a higher place and, and one of the, for me and you, we've talked about this, um, the highest level of the goal of life is when we can take our experiences, but also say, what can I do to make this better for someone else or another situation? Because there's always somebody that's worth, worse off. There's always somebody that we can reach out to. And it, again, can completely shift our personal experience. Yeah, so, so true. And that's where our third, the third module, our last module of this mm -hmm. workshop comes mm -hmm. in place as we really look at what, what are, what is our purpose here spiritually anyway? Mm. What, are, what are we doing here and how do we utilize the gifts that we've been given and our love and forgiveness in order to, to understand our purpose and actually live our purpose? Yes. So for me and you, and I know that we've, again, learned so much from these beautiful people at the end of life is what is the life's journey all about? I mean, I constantly, I think I thought of this as a child, like, what is this whole thing, you know? <laughs> and, you know, what is the point of it? And, and it seems again, that there is a beautiful common thread and it's beautiful because it's between all cultures and religions, that universal life thread of, things happening, of life experiences, of trauma, of evolution of your own personal soul um, through these experiences, through choice, through free will, and the expansion of you're not just this. There's a whole collective, and guess what? This beautiful collective is all connected. So for me, and I was just sitting on a park bench talking to one of my good friends yesterday, um, because a lot's going on in New York City and the Upper West Side. And again, it's a day to day. And we were talking about um, if I lived with the awareness that you are me and I am you and we're all connected, then I would want the best for you always. So I would always want to support you, help you, be empathetic, compassionate to you. Um, and that's again, that more of a evolved consciousness awareness that comes with the process. Yeah. yeah, yeah, definitely. And so what this journey is all really about, it's helping us understand who we are as an authentic being, who, who's, mm -hmm. what is our true self? And again, mm -hmm. the, our purpose, what are we doing here? And mm -hmm. uh, I think it can help us a lot because so many people, especially right now, who may, their job may have changed or they may have lost their job. Mm -hmm. They may be struggling to think, oh no, was that job my purpose? And now I don't have that job anymore. What am I going to do? That it reminds us we have to stay creative and stay in the flow because our purpose is about something different than just yeah. who we work for or what kind of job we do. Yeah, I don't even know that a lot of people were thinking, was that my purpose necessarily? But that was how they survived. So, you know, this is so, again, so fearful on many levels. But the universe, once again, and I'm not saying this is easy because this isn't easy, but if we do it together, it's going to work so beautifully. Um, I think the universe is kicking people out of what wasn't their purpose and giving them an opportunity to be still, to be silent, to do some internal exploration about all this and say this is your opportunity to align with what is in your heart forget what somebody told you you should become forget what society told you what brings you alive in your heart and how do i know the difference between heart-centered authentic energy and something that sounds really good but it's coming from an outside this is again the tools that we're going to teach people on the energetic frequency that are our choices and our swirling and that's what for me personally this whole journey was about is to owning that personal authentic power and knowing when it's speaking to me and how to access it and how to live in that truth and then when you align with that you're aligning with that bigger consciousness where everything 
is expansive and beautiful and available and connected. It's yeah. incredible. Yeah. Yeah. And from knowing you, Suzanne, it seems to me that your whole career, you have been inspired to be of service to other people that that's been, uh, mm -hmm. that has informed everything that you do. And so no matter what you're creating, what you're doing with your time, it seems to me that you have this, always this generosity of spirit and your oh. being of service. But I think that's really what we're all, how we're meant to be, how we're meant to approach life. Yeah. So first of all, thank you for that awareness. Um, but I will share with you. So what we're going to talk about in these tools and what I just talked about. So obviously I followed that. So I, I was a seeker early and I've, and I've always felt that connection. And then I wanted to know what the life's journey was about. And I wanted to do the process of tools and forgiveness and all of that. So I could be in that alignment. And it came down to exactly what you're saying. When you are predominantly living in that connected energy of we are one, then that dictates everything that I do. Anything that presents itself, a thought, an idea, it always is in the awareness of how does that serve the greater good or the whole, or else there's no point in me doing it because it's not really where my truth is. And it's just been the most beautiful, loving, incredible experience. So if we all, and we all can access that. Um, so you win because you're happy and fulfilled and yet it benefits everyone and you're all connected. So yeah, I try and really always just um, make every decision based on that point of view. It's almost just subconscious. And again, it's in alignment with what we've been talking about, yeah. about love and acting from love. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And, and so it's really like, a, a, it kind of brings every, in terms of our workshop, it brings the other modules together full circle mm -hmm. in a way. And mm -hmm. to emphasize that we walk out of this time we spend together in our workshop with this new heart inspired to be of service to other people. Person is part of this. So I don't want you to think because you're not a nurse or you're not, you don't have some, or maybe you were in a completely different field your whole life. Every person is intricately a part of this lattice work of the world and here for a reason and a purpose and valuable, incredibly valuable. So all you need to do is, is have the desire to want to again understand how to blossom and align in that energy and then say, how do I contribute? What is, what am I to, and you literally, it's asking that question. Once you're in that open creative space, how, how may I be of service? And it will come to you and things will, and it will be so beautiful. And that's what we'll be teaching in, in this course. Yeah. Cause I, I think really when people are searching for their purpose, I think a lot of people have the desire to be of service and that's wrapped mm -hmm. in with how they perceive their purpose but sometimes it's hard hard for them to figure out how do i get there and and what right. steps do i take so this is just a little more help to help people feel comfortable and feel inspired and and listen to their own guidance and intuition absolutely it's so good because it's kind of put this can <laughs> It's put like my life, your life in this condensed, beautiful kind of package um, that people can really come understand it, have tools to use to actually trans, like make their energy transfer, release things, exercise things, and then open that space to again, align with their purpose, all in this set of modules, which is incredible. I think every, I feel like everything is accelerated right now in, again, that's why we're kind of crunched because the universe is saying, we want to give you this gift. I know it's, we want you to really get it and be able to access it quickly. It's going to come in a really, really, really difficult package because that's how it's going to be. And, I, and again, this is a wonderful opportunity for all of us and, and using these tools, allowing you to, to understand how that all flows, to find your alignment and purpose on the other side of it um, is, is magical. Yeah. Is magical. Yeah. And so we set up the workshop with three modules that'll be a week apart, um, mm -hmm. somewhat to give people that time to process what they learned in, mm -hmm. in each module, because you can't just, you can't take it all in at once. There's so much information, but I think that that's really good. But one of the concerns I know both of us had is 
having people attend and gather all these tools and all this information mm -hmm. and then walk away and never look at it again. And so that's extremely important to both of us because we want to be teaching people life changing tools that yeah. they honestly will put to use and that will make a difference in their lives. Mm -hmm. Yep. So the beautiful thing, again, like you said, is like doing one class once a week, letting it marinate, what I call marinate, and really assimilate. Plus they have exercises to do and then come back. Also the group discussions that we'll have after each module, but then the magical putting together a follow-up accountability afterwards so that people can work their steps and then come back. Because what happens is your brain literally builds new pathways with new habits and they become part of you. And so what we're doing is creating the new. So putting, putting that piece to it is gonna be, again, something that's very much instrumental in having this shift occur for everyone. So um, I know that we have a guidebook and workbook and then we'll have an accountability about four weeks to, from the last class to come back and say, okay, show me what you've done. Let's talk about that. Because at that point, now you've built new pathways and like your new life has started. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, which is so, which is beautiful. I just feel so good about that and knowing that in a way the the support is there for people as they're mm -hmm. making these changes. Yep. And um, and yep. so I, I really do believe that this is something that could could be powerful and make a difference. It will. And I know I I mean I know it will because I, I know that we've seen these these steps at play for patients, for ourselves, for other people. And then for me, and, and we talked about it, the biggest missing piece was the follow-up accountability. Because it's all well and good and we're all so busy. And so, yes, we come to the web, we feel great, we're doing it, but then people go back to their, unfortunately, sometimes their regular routines. And um, if there's no necessarily follow up, then they're like, oh, well, I'll get back to it. And then before you know it, you haven't picked it up again. Yeah. So strategically, it's beautiful. And then hopefully we'll have some ways to continue the connection with everyone. Yeah. Um, which I think will be easy with Facebook groups and Zoom and all that kind of fun stuff because we're changing the world here. Yeah. And exactly. it, and this is going to be a big tool for us to help people to do that. Yeah. One one thing I'm excited about when we first conceived of this workshop, it was going to be an in person <laughs> yes. all day workshop. We we would mm -hmm. all be together in the in the little room. We were planning to live stream it to other people mm -hmm. who couldn't attend. But all of that changed because of coronavirus and now i'm actually even more excited by doing it online because it, it opens it opens up to so many more people being able to participate and then yeah. it caused us to stretch it out over a longer period of time because it's, mm -hmm. it would be too fatiguing to be on the online for a full day so we stretched it out but it actually that's the right thing that's the perfect yes. thing so yep. uh, so I'm, I'm just so excited that we get to teach this together and really happy yeah. that we came into each other's lives at just the right time too and we found this alignment between us and uh, yes yeah, I mean, the minute we started talking, we had the same perspective about so many things and it just felt wonderful. And I thought, my gosh, let's let's do something together and offer it. And, you know, and as we know, the workshop training kind of like developed itself. It was really quickly like we were like, wow, OK, um, because it's everything that was I mean, the universe, that's kind of how I look at it. But it's really exciting to be able to share this with everyone because we are in a place where we need tools, we need community, and we need unity. And this is going to be a platform for that. So uh, yeah. I'm happy. And that. I remember one of my patients saying to me, it was so poignant, saying, I just now figured out what really matters in life and what's really important about how to live. And he said, first of all, I wish I had known this 20 years ago. It would have changed mm. my entire life. Mm -hmm. And he said, but I also wish that I could share it with other people. I wish I could teach this to mm -hmm. other people because mm -hmm. it would make a difference in their lives. And you and I are fulfilling that wish really for all of our patients by yeah. passing on this information that has changed our lives. Yeah, it's really in all their honor um, because they've shared with us and they're just so beautiful. And um, gosh, you know, and that brings me again just to how lost we've gotten in our world on so many levels, just taking care of our elderly um, or the lack thereof and kind of, you know, 
having people just in, in homes and we don't even see aging or dying as a culture. And the wisdom and the value and the teaching that that can teach us about life, we've given away one of our most precious resources of not being around our elderly. So again, let's bring back awareness and love and consciousness on all levels and create beautiful spaces to move forward in the new world that we want to see and, yeah. and have. Yeah. Yeah. And just as I mean, this, this was this whole workshop began before we were ever in a pandemic and turns out it has all the perfect lessons in it for the time we're in. But I also believe we don't really, we don't need to persuade anyone to take the workshop that the people no. who need it will know that this is the right thing for them. And that's all we want to do is put the information out. It's like, that's it. if it resonates and it mm -hmm. sounds like that's what I need, we want to, that's who we, we just want to offer it to whoever it feels right. Exactly. And, and maybe, you know, this is something for you to think about and maybe it planted a seed for you, but you're not quite there yet. But, um, you know, there are plenty of people again, because I we talk to so many people that are like, what can I do? I'm ready. I know there's change that's needed. I just don't know how. And like you brought up way before, and this is very true. We're not taught about forgiveness. We're not taught the skill, the methods, the beauty of forgiveness, which is again, if I said there's one thing that life was about, it was about forgiveness. So how are we supposed to uh, you know, it, know that people, of course, they're floundering. Of course, we're lost. So understanding it clearly. So if you're ready for this, we just wanted to create a space for you to come and be able to access it. And let's, you know, let's have a great time doing it. Yeah. And we're so excited. And it's been such, so a, such a joy and a pleasure for both of us to put this together. So we can't wait. Um, so it's start, should we tell it starts? Sure. September 16th. Yeah. So, uh, um, so just so people know. So, yep. So it's going to be the first three um, trainings. It's going to be starting on September 16th. It's going to be on a Wednesday at 7 p.m. Eastern time for one hour and then followed by a live Q&A. And again, it's uh, three weeks consecutive. And then it will have a month from there. It'll have the follow-up accountability. You have exercises and you have just lots of things in that course. Um, it is, again, I know that we're really excited about it and we should be because we know how beautiful it is. So it's something that you are interested in. We will have those links posted um, below that you can access all the information for the registration. Yeah. Yeah. So on each of our websites and podcasts, you can find all the information that you need in order yeah. to sign up and join us. And yes. we're, I'm just excited to see who gathers with us and who, who feels called to be part of it, Suzanne. But Yeah. And you know how I always say, I say, Every workshop that I've done, whoever was supposed to be there, it always is perfect. So just knowing that we're in this together and we're always here for each other, um, just even knowing that is so important to see each other, to be here at this time, and then to share tools that can help us get, not only get through it, but to get through it into that beautiful space that we want to be in. And we will. Mark my words, we're going to get there. We're yep. ready on our way. Yeah. So, yeah. So excited, Karen. Yeah. I'm very excited too. So the, well, the name of it, just in case is uh, yeah. top lessons learned from those at the end of life, how to be a resilient in difficult times. Perfect. So, so perfect. Karen, thank you so much for doing it with me. Yeah. So oh, Suzanne, thank you. Thanks to the universe for bringing us together. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, universe. Thank you, Flo. Okay, yeah. so, so anyone interested? Yeah, the information is in the links below. And, you know, it's going to be incredible. So if you want to join us, we can't wait to see you in class. Yeah, definitely. All right. Thanks, Karen. Yeah, thank you, Suzanne. Okay, Bye. see you soon. Bye, everybody.